Onto here coming to you live from Ankasa Puri Kuala Lumpur with the interview feature of the day. And of course, if you want to join the conversation, you can always do so via our Facebook Live at TraxFM Official. That's T R A W X F M O W F I C I A L. So right now we are joined by Associate Professor Nur Adli Ridwan Shah. He's the Faculty of Economics and Muhammadat University Science Islam Malaysia on the line right now. Good morning, Professor. Good morning. How are you today? Fine, fine. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for How it. are you? Oh, I'm, I'm fine. Thank you so much. It wasn't raining earlier this morning, so I was like, an, oh, man, I wanted it to rain. <laughs> Just make it a little cooler. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> with regards... Yeah, we have a good, very good iconic weather here in Nilai. Oh, really? Ah, yeah. well, regards to people there in Nilai. Thank you very much. But anyway, uh, with regards to today's topic, which is uh, tackling the rising cost of living. Now, I, I am made to understand that uh, our inflation rate in November is uh, 4% now. And uh, what does that mean, actually, and how does it actually affect us? Well, <clears throat> the figure four percent is actually we are comparing uh, the prices of uh, goods that we are uh, that has been uh, we call it uh, calculated in the CPI Consumer Price Index, uh, comparing to the November last year, right? Comparing to November last year, so he, it has increased by four percent. So basically, it's actually um, we are looking at the prices and then. And then uh, we we looked at the increase is actually contributed from uh, the prices of food and also uh, drinks. But, uh, but if we are looking at the overall, okay, we call it the overall inflation from January until November, the increase in prices is uh, about 3.4%. So this is actually saying that the price is actually has gone up by 3.4%. And... Normally, our target inflation is uh, is approximately about two percent, okay, in in uh, throughout the years. So we are now above the two percent, so uh, about one point two percent, one point four percent above the normal rate. So uh, this is quite uh, something that has been uh, worrying us, okay, because if we look at the prices keep on going, keep on increasing. Uh, up and up and up, then we will have uh, some problem, okay, in terms of our purchasing power. Yeah, so, now, so that's with, it. With, mm. with regards to the uh, overnight policy rate, yeah, or PR, uh, set by the central bank, uh, If for those of you who are not familiar with it, well, Bank Negara Malaysia or BNM, it, it actually dictates this overnight policy rate. Now, what it is, it's actually a rate, uh, a borrow bank, uh, a rate, it's, it is a rate a borrower bank has to pay to a lending bank for the funds borrowed. Uh, so what is the current present or economic trend in our country, Rana, in your opinion? Well, okay, you know, OPR is, as you mentioned, also because it's actually the rate that the banks between banks okay, are, are lending between themselves. And this rate is actually like the, 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 the cost okay, of them... Um, we we'll call it um, uh, getting the fund, and then they, when they want to uh, lend to the people, so basically they have to have above the, the OPR. So in, in in this case, so we, we, we noticed that the OPR has increased okay, to 2.75%. So there will be another uh, hike for about 25 basis point, which is 0.25%. So probably we will see that the OPR will be around 3%. Uh, in this coming, we call it uh, December. So, uh, why do they actually increase or decrease the OPR, as we uh, mentioned uh, before uh, in the previous uh, session? It is, be it is because they want to reduce the inflation rate. Okay, that is from the monetarist view. Okay, what they can do is that if they increase the OPR, okay, they increase the OPR, and then also this is this will reduce the purchasing power of the. Um, the uh, consumers, so they tend to spend lesser because they, are, they, are, they, are, they have to pay for the uh, banking costs as such as uh, their uh, housing installment, car uh, financing and so on. So that's why, okay, the central bank uh, increased the inflation rate, and sorry, the OPR rate. And only one more thing is that if we look at the, uh, the decision that has been made by the Federal Reserve okay, in the U.S., Basically, they they also have you've been using this uh, 
increase of interest rate. So if you can see that they have been increasing drastically to until 4%. Okay, so if we compare between these uh, countries, right, so between Malaysia and also US, so we are actually uh, uh, taking 2.5, uh, 2.75, and US is getting 4%. So basically, many of investors are moving towards the uh, country that are paying more interest. So in, and that's why we can see that uh, our currency exchange okay, has been uh, weakening okay, for the past one year because the US dollar has been strengthening uh, because of their monetary policy that they are doing right now. And this is also affecting uh, other countries, okay, uh, such as uh, uh, British, uh, such as the British pound, and also Japanese yen. <clears throat> now, th- there are some upsides as well for the increase of the OPR. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, fixed deposit rates will increase loan interest. Uh, w- would also mean that the fixed deposit interest, saving interest, and so on will increase in tandem yeah, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that's one of the plus points of the uh, increase in OPR. Yes, yes, yes. But 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 uh, bear in mind, right? Because the inflation rate is actually now is about three point four percent, which is higher than the rate that the fixed deposit are giving. So this is the thing that you we want to 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 look into in our I call it uh, personal or individual um, uh, wealth management. So we don't want our uh, asset right to be lower in the, the return of our asset to be lower than the inflation rate. Now, well, now that we know, uh, we'll probably know that the probability of a hike increase of the OPR next year is probable. Uh, will the OPR increase together with other factors that occurred in uh, this year have an impact on the economy recovery in next year? Well, economic recovery is, it depends a lot of uh, other factors. Okay, we, can, uh, we have to look at the uh, inflation rate. We have to look at the GDP. Okay, at the moment, uh, right, so even though we, uh, our, uh, our inflation is uh, a bit higher as compared to two percent, but the inflation rate is uh, lower. Okay, compared to other countries such as US, US is about seven point one percent. Euro is about ten point one percent, and then uh, Indonesia. Okay, our neighboring country is about five point one percent. So basically, we are at actually a better uh, condition in terms of inflation. Okay, as compared to many other countries. However, there is another thing that we also have to look into, which is the, our uh, economic growth, GDP. Now, the, our GDP last previous uh, quarter was quite tremendous. We have increased quite, uh, quite big. However, we need to see whether the increase next year would be uh, not to be too slow, because some predicted about 4.3%. But um, if the GDP is uh, increased, growth is slow, and our inflation is high, then we will have a problem, right? But uh, if looking at the data from, from the, the World Bank data, about the, the, the world um, uh, economic data, we are quite okay in terms of that. However, we are looking at also at the performance of the Bursa Malaysia. It is not really, really well at the moment. So we have seen that there is a downtrend from 2018 until uh, this year. So we are still waiting whether we can have a, what I call it, a upward momentum after this. But in terms of a long term in nature, we are looking from the, the I mean, previous years in the two, 20 or 30 years before, we are still uh, uptrend in terms of our uh, market, uh, what I call it, direction. Oh, which is very good in terms of our economy. So uh, basically what Bank Negara of Malaysia also has set uh, for next year, according to uh, them, the overall Malaysian economy expanded by 9.3% in the first three quarters this year. Uh, headline inflation is likely to have peaked for the year at 4.5% during the quarter of uh, second quarter of this year. That's good. That's yeah, good. Right. 2.8%, while core inflation increased further to 3.7%, which is uh, 2.5%, which is actually very good because, like what you said, uh, Professor, uh, to have this inflation rate go just a bit up is just to make sure that our inflation rate goes a bit down and downtrend yeah, yeah. over there. Well, correct. Okay. So we are joined right now with professor, Associate Professor Nur Adli Ridwan Shah. He's, the, he's from the Faculty of Economics and Muamala University Science Islam Malaysia. We're talking about tackling the rising costs of living and we're going to take a short break and we'll be right back with the good professor right here in Tracks.
Good morning, Malaysia. On to here, coming to you live from Angkasa, Puri, Kuala Lumpur. Also on our Facebook page at Trax FM Official. Today, we're joined with Associate Professor Nur Adli Ridwan Shah from the Faculty of Economics and Muamalat, University of Science, Islam, Malaysia. And we're talking about tackling the rising cost of living. Good morning, Professor. Yeah, yeah. Good morning. Now, we already established uh, what is OPR, and for those of you who just tuned in, OPR is the overnight policy rate set by the central bank, and what it is, it's actually, it's a rate uh, associated to borrower bank that has to pay the lending bank for funds borrowed, meaning to say the central bank gives out the rate for the banks to actually pay back the rate. So there you go. But anyway, in this case, we already also mentioned about why the uh, increase in the OPR, it's because to tackle the inflation rate as well, and also making that certain certain GDPs are met as well in order for our GDP to go up, certain things need to go down and as well as up. But anyway, uh, what can we actually anticipate financially uh, next year, Professor, based on the information now available? Well, we know that we we will be facing what I call it uh, maybe global recession. Um, so, uh, in terms of uh, financially, we have to be uh, prepared okay, to face any problem of the whole economy. So, uh, right now, probably the best thing is actually we need to be prepared. We have to save okay, for the rainy days. Right? So, <laughs> So basically, this is something that we need to look into. And that is from our side. Okay? But uh, I would like to address this also to the government. Okay? Basically, now we are tackling one, one uh, aspect of the uh, inflation uh, from the demand side, which is the looking at the monetary side. But also, we need to uh, address also the issue of the supply, supply side, which is looking at the... Um, readiness of the uh, food okay, uh, that we are consuming every day. Now, we, we know that from the data of the Consumer Price Index, the increase okay, uh, comes from food and beverages. So basically, about 30% okay, of the weightage of the CPI comes from food, right? Now, uh, the problem is that we are, uh, even though we are in the, uh, I call it the, uh, a good climate for, for production of uh, agriculture products and also uh, fish and so on. However, we are still the net importer. We are Malaysia is a net importer in terms of food commodity, right? So there is an urge, okay, that we need to be prepared for uh, our country. Okay, basically, food security is very very important. What I'm trying to say is that we need to have a direction that we we have to prepare food. Uh, food and which is readily uh, available to the uh, public, to the consumers, so that we can we can have we can uh, what call it um, uh, encounter the inflation rate that are being imported from other countries, right? So uh, one example is that we have problem with chicken chicken prices, we have problem with the egg prices, we have problem with many other things, which is actually uh, that we are we need to use which is the necessities for us so uh, this is actually a call to the government to look into this matter and to make sure that we can implement the food security for the public mm -hmm. so which is one of the reasons why food security is very important uh, for us Malaysians if we are also exporting some commodities to other countries we need to ensure that it is enough for us in order yep. to tackle the inflation rate, which is happening globally, just like what you said. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if mm -hmm. we, some, some, we call it the public says that, for example, for eggs, right? Mm -hmm. eggs, we, we don't have eggs in our country right now okay, because uh, if you look at the, from the perspective of the, we call it, egg manufacturer or egg producer, so it is uh, reasonable for them to export when the uh, ringgit is weak. So we are being paid in terms, for example, in, in US dollar, so you, your return will be higher. So it, we, we can understand that why actually eggs are being exported to other countries. Even though our, our, our what call it, uh, local consumption is, which is we, we try to go with to this supermarket and that supermarket. I mean, we can't find eggs <laughs> anywhere in the market. But it is, it is actually uh, logically, right? So for this uh, uh, egg producer to actually export. Right, because they can have a higher return. Mm -hmm. Okay, because ringgit is weak, uh, I mean, uh, weakening. Right, yep. so they will be paid in US dollar. So it is better to export. So, so because where ringgit is actually weakening, so 
it is actually the we uh, the it's actually the exporter market exactly so w- right. which is what you said logically it is important for yep. them to export because the ringgit yeah. is uh, you know the US dollar is much more higher and the returns are much more better so that they can yeah. survive and but but, I, but but this is this is the point that <clears throat> the government can can uh, jump in mm. and then fulfill the gap Okay, oh. mm-hmm. so since, since they are going for export, okay, then it's good for them because export is also good for Malaysia. But to uh, produce for the local consumption, maybe the government can have some uh, what I call initiative to produce eggs, for example, or chicken, which is actually can be uh, consumed by our uh, locals. Uh, consumers. So you're saying the government should provide a uh, policy for for eggs, for example, is it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ah, yeah. Okay. So, so saying that we are, I'm, I'm, I'm suggesting that the government can actually, uh, for example, um, uh, come up with a strategy which whereby they can actually set up a very big uh, eggs uh, producing uh, company, mm-hmm. right? Okay, so that whenever, okay, uh, for example, if these companies are exporting, uh, exporting outside, we still have this, what I call it, the food security for the local consumers. Now, thinking, so, thinking, mm-hmm. taking that into consideration, now the quality should be in question as well. So hopefully okay. that the government can provide a, a possible policy for uh, companies here in Malaysia to provide local consumption, uh, adequate uh, food security for us as well. So yeah, that's, that's very good. Because according to the Prime Minister, the Unity Government will prioritize addressing the issue of rising cost of living uh, to lessen the burden of the people. Uh, what causing this is, of course, like you did mention, uh, the, uh, the ringgit has, has dropped, so exports are much more, like we said, logical for suppliers to actually export overseas, which is a need also, uh, our commodities overseas. Um, now, I'd just like to inquire, the government is actively addressing the effects of inflation, but in order to reduce its inflation on a daily basis, the public must also get involved. So what are your recommendations uh, would you provide regarding spending and saving? Well, spending and saving it doesn't matter right? whether we are in recession or whether we are the economy is good. Okay, we need to have a very good uh, spending behavior and also a very good or consistent saving behavior. Right. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't matter whether we are in, I mean, in the economy is not good. The economy is good. We still have to uh, save. For example, if if, if we we um, when the economy is good, we need to save. Right. And then when the economy is not really good, we also need to save, but at the same time, we use what we, we, what we already save for the consumption at that particular time. So, for example, in, uh, during the COVID-19, okay, COVID-19 last time, uh, we have done, uh, we call it a survey towards the, uh, how the consumption behavior between, uh, for, for the consumers. So we, we noticed that during the uh, COVID-19, the uh, consumption behavior, the spending behavior becoming better, okay, becoming better. And then afterwards, okay, during right now, we are, we are afflicted the COVID-19, then we, we tend to be, I mean, um, spending more, okay, as compared during the COVID-19. But if we can actually, uh, what call it, maintain, okay, our lifestyle in terms of how we save, how we spend, I think we can actually... Uh, uh, encounter any unforeseen future. Okay, uh, I, I think that's that. uh, that's the key over there. Maintain. That's yeah. the key idea over here when it comes yeah, to spending yeah, and saving. Yeah. Uh, do you think that cash is king right now? Well, cash doesn't provide you any return in terms of uh, when it's idle, right? Mm. So when then we have a high inflation. So cash, you, you want to have cash. Uh, in, in uh, lying around without any uh, productivity curve, which is, I think, it would be not um, really good at the moment. Mm-hmm. We need to find which is the investment that actually can provide, what I call it, a, a better return or maybe can a counter inflation rate. Mm-hmm. It's like right? investing, like fixed deposit. Fixed deposit is still low, lower than the inflation rate at the moment. At the moment. But it's right. still safe, right? Currently, yeah, it's still safe. Mm-hmm. But we still cannot like encounter the inflation rate. For example, inflation rate is about three point four percent. If your uh, fixed deposit is paying about two percent, then we still have a negative one point four percent for 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 the inflation. So basically, we need to find something which is quite good at the moment uh, that can actually uh, provide uh, what I call it um, uh, inflation as 
what we call it um, safe haven. Okay, yeah. uh, okay, as compared to the rising inflation at the moment. True. Aside from saving and spending, investing is also very important right now. So uh, finding the right investing platform is essential. Uh, so we're talking to Associate Professor Nur Adli Ridwan Shah. He's from the Faculty of Economics and Muamalat University Science, Islam, Malaysia. We're talking about tackling the rising cost of living. Now we're going to take another short break and we'll be right back with the good professor right here on Tracks FM. Once again, good morning, Malaysia. All to here coming to you live from Ankasa Puri Kuala Lumpur with the interview feature of the day. And with us right now, we have Associate Professor Nur Adli Ridwan Shah from the Faculty of Economics at Muamla University Science Islam Malaysia. We are also currently live on Facebook. Head over to Trax FM Official. That's T R A W X F M O W F I C I A L. Now, I'd just like to say a quick hello to Patricia Lim Li Ting for coming to for giving out the comments. Says good morning, Trax FM DJ Oto Professor and all Traxers listening out there. A well, good morning to you. As well, so if you feel like you want to share this, uh, share this Facebook Live, please do so. You want to comment, just give a comment. If you'd like to give it a thumbs up, well, please, thank you very much for that. But anyway, we are talking about tackling the rising costs of living. Now, we already established how important it is to actually have the uh, OPR increase just a bit to help us battle the inflation rate. Also, the GDP seems to be in good standings with us uh, as Malaysians as well. The only issue is could be because uh, the ringgit is currently going down and other uh, countries are going up for certain reasons. So make sure that you, as a consumer, as a Malaysian citizen, save up and also spend wisely, particularly when it comes to this uh, next year coming up. Anyway, uh, to this 
Uh, to that end, on December 13, 2022, Prime Minister Dato Sri Anwar Ibrahim uh, issued an order to all government ministries directing them to design and formulate appropriate measures to implement targeted subsidies. I think that's the situation right now, targeted subsidies. Now, Professor, uh, where yeah, do you think okay. sh- should be, should it be targeted? Well, um, hello, can you hear me? Oh, yes, I can hear you. Thank okay, you. Okay, all right. So basically, um, when we talk about subsidies right now, uh, at the moment, we are uh, having quite a big amount that we spend on subsidies. So, for example, we have subsidies on petroleum, subsidies on the, uh, cooking oil, uh, even eggs also. Okay, Every, uh, every egg that we, we, we consume, 10 cents is being subsidized. So... There is something that uh, we are looking into whether we have to subsidize everybody or we only have to subsidize the people who are really, really uh, in need, okay, really in need. So when we talk about the, the, the questions, uh, whether we have to subsidize all, subsidize all, or we have to subsidize only a certain people, as targeted people. Right, now, uh, probably there, there are some people who like, to agree on to subsidize all, and some will agree only on specific people, which are, uh, for example, the B40 to be subsidized, okay, uh, on uh, on certain I would call it subsidies such as petrol, uh, I would call it cooking oil, and so on. But uh, we, we we can actually say that okay, uh, yeah, uh, if we want to subsidize all then the government has to come up with quite a big sum of money, right, to, 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 to do that. Right. So in, in, in lieu of that, so probably the government will have to look into on how they can actually assist okay, the certain people who are really in need so that the, the, the income gap, or what I call it the, the, the gap between the have and the have not, can be reduced, all right? So, so in this, uh, we call it um, strategy, okay, that is being uh, imp- uh, we call it uh, being planned and going to be implemented is looking at how, okay, the government can uh, subsidize a certain people, for example, the B40, so that they can actually uh, uh, we call it live comfortably, uh, okay, and also can uh, survive, okay, in, in this coming years, okay, in, uh, uh, in our economy. Well, to do, to do that is quite difficult, okay, quite challenging, right? So to, to, to subsidize only the uh, specific target of people, okay, that mm-hmm. is very, very, really challenging at the moment. Because right now, for example, if you go and uh, want to, I uh, would call it to um, fuel up your car, Okay, basically you just um, uh, and then pay, and then you'll be uh, you'll be also be receiving the subsidy. Okay, yep. but how do you want to differentiate between okay, these are B40, okay, these these are the people who need the, okay the subsidy, and this is quite well off already. You yes. don't have to get subsidy, and that is something that that the government need to look. Okay, how do actually this can be done, but without any I need we call it um, uh, spirit, right? Or maybe any manipulation mm-hmm. by certain group of people. Oh, that's the biggest right. issue over there when it comes to yep, targeted yep. Uh, uh, targeted subsidies. Well, uh-huh. uh, that will definitely take a lot of research and a lot of time. I, I don't think we need to do a lot of research at the moment. We don't have to do a lot of more research. Mm-hmm. What we can do is right now is actually we need to uh, implement, right? Mm. Now, what we can do is that we have all this because if we want to do this, we need to have database. Okay? Yes. We need to have database. Oh, definitely. We already have. We have. We already have the ICE, I, I, um, uh, the one last time COVID nineteen. Um, the uh, what, what's the, the the apps that that apps? Uh, uh, yeah, for 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 taking the jab okay, for COVID nineteen. Oh. Um, uh, my Sajatra? <laughs> yeah, yeah, my okay. <laughs> yes, I, It's been so long <laughs> since yeah, I've said so that. Long, and then we have really almost forgotten. But we, can't, we have spent quite a lot of money, right? Yes. So we have the My Sajatra, we have all the other, other database. What we need to do is that we need to combine all these databases and then we can, we also have this 
new thing that we call artificial intelligence, mm. right? Artificial intelligence. Now we we have the brains. We have the brains. We need to uh, uh, deploy, okay, all our brain to do this, right? Okay. So we don't need to do the research anymore because other 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 many other countries are also doing this, right? So we we need to use that, okay, use the database, okay, and then use the artificial intelligence, and then we can say, okay, uh, for example, count the this uh, or if you are you want to fill up the car, then you know that this is actually yeah, you, this this person. Can actually receive the subsidy. Well, okay? use, uh, use, utilizing technology it might be a bit far fetched for now here in Malaysia. But yes, yeah, the idea yeah. is there. Definitely yeah. AI and also techno- uh-huh. applying technology for a first step, like what you said. Uh-huh. We already have data yeah. from yeah. Mysore Jastra. But uh, yeah, then again, we have to implement more, especially when it comes to the station. So there are a lot of like uh, moving parts for that matter as well. But yeah, uh, yeah, like yeah. you said, data is already there. It's just a matter of implementing it. But since that we don't have enough time right now, I'm yes, so sorry yes, to take yes. up your time. Uh, <laughs> once again, before anything else, do you have anything you'd like to add? Well, uh, we are facing uncertainties in the future. We are looking at 2023, probably the the global recession so we need to uh to be prepared for this okay we need to be prepared for this so um uh, i would like to say that probably we need to look okay back to our budget so uh we need to save uh, quite some uh big amount of money maybe 10 percent or 20 percent for your emergency fund so uh, that's all Okay, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, we are talking to Associate Professor Nur Adli Ridwan Shah from the Faculty of Economics and Muamalat University of Science Islam Malaysia. Once again, thank you very much, Professor. You have a good day ahead of you. Yeah, you too. All right, so there you have it. Coming to you live from Angkasa Puri Kuala Lumpur. Wowza, that's a lot of information for you to actually just uh, swallow. But then again, it all boils down to you as a consumer, as Malaysians, and make sure that you do your very best to maintain what you have right now and invest properly and save up when you need to. All right, so the government is doing their very best when it comes to the inflation rate, like uh, Our good professor said uh, the increase of uh, the OPR helps the inflation rate to go down. And uh, for those companies who have uh, very big companies, like for example, like we did, we did just mention the uh, uh, egg manufacturers, the egg producers, try to do something to help out Malaysia as well and join together with the government because we are definitely trying our very best to ensure that Malaysia stays on top and thrives to go forward no matter if the uh, whole world becomes into a you know, whole recession. We are still stable and strong and great. So let us stay that way. In the meantime, we've got the news coming up at the top of the hour. I'll be back after right here on Tracks FM. Good morning, Malaysia.